Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Welcome to Metaview United Methodist Church, 768 Summit Road here in Eden, North Carolina. We're glad that you chose to come and worship with us today as we study God's Word, as we pray together, as we fellowship, and as we simply uh, praise the Lord together. For our announcements, um, continue to reach out to people that's, that's not able to be here today. Our bingo will start back on Tuesday, April the 5th at 6 p.m. So if you enjoy playing bingo, come and be with us. We have a good time. We need bingo prizes for the nursing home. Uh, if you have some concerns, whatever they might be, that you want us to know about, then please tell us. <coughs> Remember your offering, <coughs> excuse me, to MetaView. <coughs> Remember our, our troops, first responders, everybody that puts their lives in danger just about every day. Pray for Ukraine and other nations in that area of the world. It's just, I just can't believe what's going on there. And they've entered their second month of fighting now. So uh, please lift uh, that entire part of the world up in your prayers, please. Our Palm Sunday is April the 10th. Monday Thursday, of course it's on Thursday night, will be on April the 14th at 6 p.m. I've invited uh, Spray United Methodist Church to come and worship with us that night. And in turn, I'm hoping that some of us can go to Spray for their Good Friday service. If some of us have been there. I think Bill and Joe have been there, maybe some others. And uh, it, it's, it's a, a very somber, uh, it's the service is, is, is dark as we think about the death of Jesus. And, uh, there's candles that we light and, and different things, but I encourage you to go and support them, and hopefully a number of them will come and support us. Uh, when a number of those people were at First Methodist, they came every year and, and worshiped with us for our Monday Thursday service. Uh, our Easter service is April the 10th, and we need to make a decision about sunrise service. Uh, it's on April the 10th at 6.43. I question whether we're going to get enough people to come that early in the morning, and I'm also concerned about the amount of food that we would need to, you know, to feed us. So my recommendation is let's wait till next year to have our sunrise service. But if you want to have it, please tell me, and we can revive it this year. What, what's your desires? Well, next year. Next year sounds good. Okay, is that, is that agreeable to wait till next year to start it back? Thank you. Uh, I was hoping that James Stevens would be here today. He worked on the hedging out here along the entrance to the church. Uh, if you happen to talk with uh, James, be sure and tell him thank you for his work out there looks much better than, than it is. It was sticking out about a foot out into the walkway. And uh, it's, it's, it's much better. And I do appreciate his work on that. Do we have other announcements today? Do we have any anniversaries? I know we got two birthdays. Joe's birthday is tomorrow. I was hoping he would... Uh, come in just a minute, so we may wait just a little bit to see how it And Tuesday's my birthday, and so, uh, uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that, assuming that uh, Joe gets here shortly. You'll get old about half of it, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Peggy and I are basically the same age, <laughs> and I don't mind telling how old I'll be. <laughs> uh, any other announcements? Let's stand as we're able for our first hymn. It's 127, Guide me, O oh, thy, thy great Jehovah. 127.
as we say together our uh, call to worship, it comes from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His, His praise, praise will continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. He delivered me from all my fears. You may be seated. If you'll turn in your hymn book again, please, to 128. He leadeth me, O blessed thought. 128.
Yes. Uh, yeah. We got to go and spend the day with Deborah Saturday. She's doing really good. She's doing her, coming up on the week of chemo, so I wanted to get with her. Very good. good. Well, it's Friday. I'm sorry, Friday. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Others. Uh, I'm thankful I had a tooth that was really, really hurting. And, uh, I was able to go to the, the dentist and get the crown out and the root out and the infection out and so forth. I'm still on antibiotics, but it, it doesn't hurt like the excruciating pain that it was. And if <coughs> my speech today isn't quite normal, uh, I have just a little bit of trouble uh, sometimes saying some of my words. But uh, anyway, I'm thankful it doesn't hurt now. So, I'll that's say that I had the same thing this week, and I'm still sore right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sore, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't hurt like it did. That's a different kind of hurt. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Others. I thank God I was blessed this morning. And He blessed you with a good trip. He did a wonderful trip. Okay. <laughs> Others. He watches almost every day. Amen. Anyone else? God is good. All the time. All of the time. God All is good. good. Amen. Nick, if you would come up and share with us this morning.
thank you, Nick. It's a very beautiful song and has so much meaning for us as Christians. Thank you. Our responsive reading is found in our hymn book on page 746. 746, and it continues on the next page. We're reading from Psalm 14. Please join with me. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are they corrupt, they do wild deeds. There is none that does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all people to see if there are any that are wise who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike the verse. There is none that does good. No, not one. They have no knowledge. The evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is the refuge. Oh, that deliverance from Israel will come from Zion. When the Lord restores their fortunes, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. that we need to lift up or update. You want eight, my sister Marie Brooks. Okay. Marie Brooks. Others. They uh, had a trace report on baby Donald Jackson Dean. Uh, his mother got to hold him for the first time this past week. They have removed him from both of the ventilators. He's off with all of his antibiotics and I'm not sure yet, but she had said in that post that by the end of this week, that he would, this past week, that he would be able, they would, would be able to feed him. Praise the Lord. Yes, Ethan. Can I put uh, my Papa Roger on there? Yes. D tell me the name again. Pop, uh, uh, Roger Shockley. Roger Shockley, thank you. I couldn't think of his first name. <laughs> thank you. First name is Papa. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't know him as Papa Shockley. 
<laughs> so that's the reason I had to ask you. <laughs> and I didn't remember, I'm sorry. Others, let us pause for our meditation and our prayers, please. you do for us every single day. Lord, be with those that are sick. Remove their pain. Heal their bodies. And not only be with the person that is sick, but be with their caregivers at all levels. Be with those that are grieving. We'll lift them up and provide them with peace and comfort. Lord, there's so many problems in our world today, and you know every single one of them. Help resolution come for all the different difficulties that people are facing. Lord, we especially lift up the nation of Ukraine. Help them to be able to end the war, keep their freedom. They've lost so many people, either by death, or people leaving the country. Lord, our world's a mess. Help us to become once again not only a nation under God, but a world under God that would repent for our sins and turn toward you. Lord, be with this church and all churches. Help us to see your mission for us. We're, we're small, we're limited in many ways, and yet, Lord, we know that there's ways that we can share your love, your mercy with others. Help us to see these opportunities and, and, and step forward and, and, and do what we need to do in serving you. Lead and guide us, Father. For we ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Remember our offering for the church. And Nick, if you will share with us some special music.
my God, you're all together lovely, you're all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say, oh, you're my multiple ways, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to remember those things. Uh, Joe, you have a birthday tomorrow. Yes. We're going to sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> so hopefully both of us have wonderful birthdays. Thank you, Kathy. For our scripture today, I'd like to go back to the Old Testament. I'd like to read from the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 9 through 12. I'm reading from the King James Version. Again, Joshua chapter 5, beginning with verse 9. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore the name of the place is called Gilgah until this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgah and kept the Passover in the fourteenth day of the month and even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover and leavened cakes and parched corn in the same self day. And the manna ceased on the morning after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I read about a, a woman named Joan Kyerson. She was a Catholic sister. She was a prolific writer. And she tells about her, her personal counseling work with a 70-year-old woman. The woman had been abused by her brother as a child. Because of fear, she had never told her mother about the abuse. While it happened, she wished she could die. Now, decades later, the guilt, the shame, the hurt, and the anger still lingers, as is typical with trauma survivors. Some of her thoughts would strike us as irrational. She imagined that somehow people could look at her and know what had happened to her. Perhaps, in her mind, they did not want to offer her comfort, but to, to blame her for what had happened. These feelings affected her ability to form relationships. The, the counselor held her in her arms while she cried buckets of tears. The abuse had ended, but the after effects tormented her. Even near the end of her life, she could not shake them off. Kyster worked with her to begin to restore her sense of wholeness. But the woman had lost years to her experience. She felt guilt and shame for something someone else did to her. She had no blame, but to her it seemed like it had been her fault. 
and that came from a book, Scarred by Struggle, Transformed by Hope, that Kister wrote. The feelings from childhood trauma, from abuse, uh, that they clutch at our souls, refusing to let go. The past reaches into the present and continues on with the damage. With that in mind, look at our scripture today that we've read it. Whatever material provisions the people of Israel brought with them from the past, they certainly had plenty of emotional and spiritual baggage to carry along. As a collective people, they had endured slavery, <coughs> abuse, deceit, discrimination, all before they left Egypt. Pharaoh knew all the tricks to break the spirit of the people. We'll read about that in the first chapter of Exodus. The escape from Egypt had looked at first like the beginning uh, of better times. The people sang, danced, and celebrated. And it talks about that in Exodus chapter 15. Before long, what at first looked like a, a fresh start became pure drudgery. They faced hunger and thirst. They quarreled, complained, and protested. Some of them wanted to go back. They challenged Moses' leadership. They fought battles. They disobeyed God and refused to learn from their mistakes. By the time we reach the book of Numbers, God has decided the people had failed in their calling. God can't use them. God starts over with their children. We find that in Numbers chapter 20. And a scene that we should consider as dramatic and memorable is the crossing of the Sea of Reeds, the Red Sea. Joshua leads the people over dry land to, to cross the Jordan River. The people have arrived at their destination after 40 years. Now they occupy the Promised Land. Joshua has an, an, an important task, as told in the earlier verses of today's chapter of Joshua. He circumcises the males among the people. Typically, a male undergoes circumcision as an infant. The ceremony serves as an initiation rite among the people. Joshua circumcises adults who had known only the wilderness. They never made a single brick. They never felt a single uh, lash from the overseer's wheel. They had spent not one day in slavery to the Pharaoh. Basically what we're seeing is that all the people that left Egypt had basically died and now it's their children that's going into the promised land. They had not quarreled with Moses or disobeyed the command to collect only so much manna. They came into the world after those events. Yet Joshua told the people that the circumcision rolled away the disgrace of Egypt. After generations, the shame and the baggage had still lingered. The people needed to begin to grow in their new identity. The circumcision itself created a need for physical healing, but also a means of spiritual healing. God began the process of rolling away all of the spiritual damage from slavery, abuse, and the confusion of the time that they had wandered in the wilderness. But the woman that had brought her agony to the counselor and the people of Israel found out that disgrace or shame or guilt, they're not easily rolled away. In what ways do we find the lingering effects of, of something where we need to roll away the emotional and spiritual baggage? People who have struggled with any kind of addiction know the lingering effects of what they've endured. Putting the alcohol, the drugs, the gambling, pornography, it takes strength. Yet even after that last drink, that last snort that last bed, that last video, the baggage cleans on. The guilt over the way they have treated their families and others just keeps rolling along. 
the sorrow over the lost money and the damage to their bodies means rolling away. Even with years of, of clean and sober living, the temptation lurks just around the corner. Can they continue to find the strength to resist their temptation? Can they cope in new ways with their pain? Can they shake off the labels and the negative ways that they've identified themselves? Can they handle the anger of the people that they've hurt? When the church can offer grace and support and understanding to those that have been beaten by addiction, we can become part of the process of rolling away the disgrace. Most of us think our faith is something that helps us and heals us. Many people, however, have to heal from damaging religion. Some children grow up with a, a faith based on fear and shame, with heavy doses of guilt. The shame, fear, and guilt put up a barricade that blocks God's love and keeps it on the other side. That kind of religion maybe kept the children in line, made them easier to control, but it doesn't plant the seeds for a healthy faith based on love and on grace. Decades later, the noise of the condemnation still rings in their ears. The, the, the shame wells back up in them. They may give intellectual assess to God's love, but some part of their soul finds it hard to warm up to that love. The pain and the damage linger. They need the antidotes of Romans 8. Romans 8, chapter uh, 8, verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And nothing, as we find in Psalms 103, Nothing can separate us from the love of God. They need that booster shot that we find in Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. Just as with addiction, healing from unhealthy religion needs, it needs an approach that includes a whole arsenal Counseling, prayer, support, healing sermons, reading, and time. God's grace comes directly from the Holy Spirit, but also through other people, through Scripture, and often hard work. The whole people of Israel needed the rolling away of disgrace, the shame and guilt were not just an individual problem. With the United States, we deal with racism. Across centuries, slave discrimination, injustice, cruelty. We faced that, and not, not just uh, minority people, black people. Everybody has faced some of those things. These things have harmed people harm people financially. We know that about the, the wealth gap, the education gap, the employment gap that we find, they have harmed people, they've harmed their souls. James Cone has written of Fannie Lou Hamer, civil rights activist and voting rights champion, she endured violence and oppression because of the work that she did. Her faith and her understanding of Jesus' crucifixion sustained her in her work. Combs says that Hamer understood the religious meaning of the cross because she interpreted it in the context of being beaten and shot at and nearly lynched for her work. But no amount of affliction could stop 
her resistance work. And she wrote uh, the book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree. The passage of time alone did not roll away the pain of Egypt for the people of Israel. Time alone did not heal the woman of the after effects of abuse. Time alone has not rolled away the after effects of all the discrimination that we found in our world. The church should stand at the forefront of efforts to bring healing and concrete impairment to all people. The process begins at least with the attempt to listen and to understand. Repentance must form part of the effort. God sees our long struggles, and we're all struggling one way or another. Abuse, addiction, hurt for religion, discrimination, are just a few examples as we seek our own healing. So God works within us and the world to support us. God offers the grace and the power to roll away shame and injury, struggle and hurt. Just as circumcision created pain in bringing healing, so facing our past can cause pain before it heals. Yet we trust God. We look toward the future God can create in each of us. We embrace the power of God to roll away the hurt from our past. I found an illustration I'd like to share. The 19th century Spanish general, Ramon Narvegas, was on his deathbed, and toward the end was visited by a priest, and eventually the discussion came around to the condition of the officer's soul. The priest asked him, Sir, have you forgiven your enemies? I have no need to forgive them, the officer replied. I've had them all shot. The myth of the dramatic deathbed conversion is usually just that. It's often a myth. <coughs> a person who has spent a lifetime ignoring God is very difficult in that last moments of their life. Lying there waiting for death's door. Consider what John Tilliston, Archbishop of Canterbury, said way back in 1691 to 1694 about deathbed conversions. Do we think that when the day is finally spent and squandered away, we shall be fit to work with the, when the night and the darkness comes, when our understanding is weak and our memory frail and our wheel crooked and by long custom of sinning, bent the wrong way. What can we then do in religion? What reasonable or acceptable services can we then perform to God when our candle is just sinking into the socket? How shall our light so shine before men that they may see our good works? I will, will not pronounce anything concerning the impossibility of a deathbed repentance, but I'm sure that it is very difficult, and he says, I believe, very rare. We need to remind people that our lives have only so much time. Do not make Jesus wait. Look around us and see who we need to minister to and help before it's too late. Let us pray, Lord. You are an awesome God. We praise your holy name. Now be with us, lift us up, strengthen us, give us the stamina and the courage to serve you in so many different ways that are available. Leading God as Father, for we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
closing hymn today. It's found on page 362, Nothing But the Blood. Let us stand as we're able. 362. <coughs> Amen.